Greetings, welcome to another Deckard Games YouTube thing and uh, it is November of 2019 hopefully when this video comes up because time time is a pain and uh, well it is uh, time for uh, Blade Runner because uh, flying cars are definitely a thing in fact one just uh, passed uh, outside my window and uh, Atari, Atari is also a thing we have the uh, Atari box, a huge system, and the replicants, those replicants are a, are a pain to deal with. If you never come across a replicant, I don't blame you, because, well, they are just like humans, and uh, some would say that uh, they are more humans than uh, real humans, but uh, yeah, regardless, it is time to play Blade Runner, so uh, let's do it. Developed by Astwood Studios and published by Virgin Interactive in November of 1997, Blade Runner is a point-and-click adventure game that follows the plot of the movie. Looking at the box we have some logos and uh, a guy that isn't Deckard right at the front. And in the back of the box we have some uh, back of the box stuff letting you know that the game takes place in Los Angeles in November of 2019, along with some catchphrases which begin with uh, immersive, groundbreaking, stunning, breakthrough and uh, top-notch. It also lets you know that the game is from the same company who made Command and Conquer because, well, you gotta milk that game. Inside the box we get the game, which allows you to play the game in four lovely circular pieces of plastic. We also get a jewel case manual covering the installation process and some aspects of the game and a uh, warranty card and uh, a yellow paper. Alright, let's put this all back into place and uh, let's play some Blade Runner. And Blade Runner starts by starting at the start, no menu whatsoever, you're immediately thrown into the game. If you were expecting a main menu, well, screw you, just play the game. And while playing the game, the first thing that one notices is that the environment is just like the movie, which is a very good thing. Being a cult classic, Blade Runner is set in the dystopian future, Los Angeles of 2019. With a grim look filled with neons, the movie is a sci-fi film noir. Blade Runner the game doesn't try to be different. The game is set in the exact same world and follows a parallel story to the movie. The player takes the role of rookie Blade Runner Ray McCoy, whose job is to hunt down and retire replicants that go on a more than human fight for survival. As a fan of the movie, first impressions are awesome. I find myself just admiring the beautiful backgrounds, the bright neons, dark corners, cars, and the rain. Oh, the rain. Real sushi was a luxury reserved only for the elite, since most sea life had become radioactive after the Third Terran War. The rest of us had to eat new sushi. Soya mixed with off-world lichen. Despite being more than 20 years old, the graphics still holds up today. 
for an adventure game of course and if you don't care about some 90s pixelation i sure don't it is still very much playable in this department the mandatory cutscenes in an adventure game are top notch and is still very impressive even by today's standards Welcome relief, considering that the most action I'd seen all night was a schizoid grandmother doing the shimmy in her underwear in the second sector. Voice acting is also good with actors nailing each and every sentence. And as for the music, well, the movie has an absolutely awesome soundtrack by Vangelis, which is iconic. And while the game doesn't feature any music by Vangelis, it clearly draws some inspiration from it, with a calm but unsettling music that is just a pleasure to the ears. Can you think of anything they might have been after? First I thought they wanted money, but I don't keep any in the shop. Then I thought One of the things that was great animals, about the movie is also present in the game. That is the ability to raise some questions. Although the main story is quite linear, again, it's an adventure game, there are moments here and there where choices have to be made. Like shooting a suspect or try to capture him to administer the classic Voigtkamp test before calling it a replicant. Yes, one gets to ask some awkward questions to cause different levels of stress to detect a replicant. Or maybe kill a human by mistake. You know, crap happens. Zubin was the first Nexus 6 I'd come up against. There was something in his eyes, an almost primordial desire to live. Most of the 3s, 4s and 5s I'd seen would just give up when you had them. But these 6s, they were a whole other breed. Like said before, although the main story is quite linear, there are some little twists from time to time which transform the view of the world itself. It is very easy to grow suspicious of everyone being a replicant, ready to kill you and, even at a certain time, get suspicious of yourself being a replicant, just like the movie. There are quite a few decisions throughout the gameplay that change the way the game progresses, causing dialogues and characters to appear in different times or just disappear. While not being a completely free gameplay, where every action makes a different effect, there's enough freedom to give a try on different choices just to see what happens. One thing that is very well done in Blade Runner the game are the different endings. Those choices that result in different consequences also lead to different endings. And there are quite a few in this game, each one with its own moral implications. Relax, nobody's gonna get retired, okay? What do you want from Zubin? Just talk, that's all. So talk? There are things I want... You ever retire a human, your career is over. Remember that. Although Westwood puts the idea of a real-time adventure game with characters moving around the world and requiring you to retire replicants on the spot, this isn't quite true. The McCoy, gameplay LPD. is not Can timed. Or in other words, Sorry, time I is not constantly time. flowing. There are only a few moments where you have to be ready to kill or get killed. Depends on how much the information's worth. How often these tense moments occur depends on previous actions. The actions that one takes can uh, cause a peaceful dialogue or a gunfight that will probably get McCoy killed because, well, you weren't expecting it. Beautiful night, isn't Despite these we moments of action, the main Not gameplay is uh, your standard point-and-click adventure game. Go this from place, place to place, Put discover some clues, examine some stuff, supply. engage in dialogues, and Turn ask the right it? questions yes, to get sir. the right answers. Every time that a piece of intel that is important to the story is gathered, 
it is automatically added to your knowledge integrating assistant or Kia, Uploading not the car, the computer in Blade Runner. A simple key press is all that's needed to access all the important information. Clues are categorized by replicant or non-replicant for a easy judgment. Clues that uh, other Blade Runners have discovered can be uploaded to your Kia at the police headquarters, providing a helpful aid when one is stuck on uh, what to do. One also has the help of Officer Dino Klein that can analyze all evidence you collect in his futuristic lab. As an extra, the player also uses the Esper, a weird contraption that uh, examines photos in a weird way for uh, hidden clues, again, just like the movie. It's some kind of insect. Give me a hard copy of that. Kind of a Unlike other yeah. adventure games, especially Sierra Roll ones key. that can go over the top with it, the game doesn't have any kind of puzzles to be solved. Which I guess it makes sense, since this is a detective adventure game with emphasis on the story and uh, raising questions. This means that one can simply mash the mouse button while looking for clues and progress to the next area without any clue of what's going on, resulting in a game that can be finished in a single night of 90s adventure greatness. Relax. Nevertheless, the different endings are an incentive to go back to the beginning and uh, give it another try. Blade Runner is not perfect, and in a world of LucasArts and Sierra adventure games, one can get suspicious about it. However, the beautiful and dystopian world where it takes place, the magnificent story that leaves you asking questions about morals, actions and life in general, and the very simple to use controls, all make for a great experience. Blade Runner the game? Just like the movie, is a sublime experience. While not being perfect, don't let that experience get lost in time. Like tears in rain. Time to play. Didn't have to. That's why they call it the magic. Zubin was the first Nexus 6 I'd come up against. There was something in his eyes, an almost primordial desire to live. Most of the 3s, 4s and 5s I'd seen would just give up when you had them. But these 6s, they were a whole other breed. And if you like this review, I have more right here on the channel, so why not click on these for more. Subscribe to the channel and leave a like in this video because those are very much appreciated. As always, thank you very much for watching this and until my next video, take care.